Hello, Animanian here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make cum simulations in Blender with the paid Blender plugin Flip Fluids. So as you can see here, it looks something like this. As we can see in cycles in real time, it looks like this. So it actually animates. I'll show you in material preview mode. Yep, so we're going to be trying to make uh, this in this tutorial today. And um, we can see this second uh, example that I made. So you can see it looks kind of like this. And I'll play it back. So a nice ice cream fountain. Yep, and I'll just play it back in material preview mode so you can get a better idea of what it looks like. So this is Flip Fluids basically. So it's the paid Blender plugin. Okay, so but before we get started, there's a Discord link in the description below to an NSFW Blender Discord that I made. So please join this uh, Discord if you want to talk to me or you want to ask any questions whatsoever. A uh, second thing is, even if you don't watch this tutorial, please uh, look at this Google Drive link, which will be in the video description below. So please download this uh, zip file. Why? Because basically I went around the internet and I compiled all the NSFW Blender uh, related tutorials that I could find. So this will teach you all the basics that you really need to know. And yeah, so please download this one tutorial <laughs> zip file with all these other tutorials inside of it. Okay, and the final thing is, if you want to see more NSFW Blender uh, tutorials from me in future, please join the the video the link in the description below to my second channel, Nyan NSFW, because I want to protect my current channel. Okay, so without further ado, let's actually get started now. So what are the prerequisites for this uh, tutorial? So basically, just type in cum bucket uh, smut base. So you want to click on the first link that pops up. And this is a, a set of cum materials for both Cycles and Eevee by Crute. So I'm going to show you how to use them today, but it's pretty simple. Just file append it and yeah. So basically, just uh, scroll down to the very bottom here and you want to download the v2.0.blend file. So you just want to click on download and just wait a little bit. Uh, I won't download it because I have downloaded it already. Second thing that you want to download, the most important thing, which is the Flip Fluids uh, Blender add-on. So Flip Fluids, so this is paid, unfortunately. It is like $76 USD, which is a little bit annoying, um, but um, it is a lot better for cum simulation for, than the default Blender Mantaflow because I have tried that one out and this one has a few extra effects like sheeting effects and viscosity, which makes it a little bit better than the uh, default Blender uh, uh, Mantaflow fluid simulator. Okay, so you need to pretty much go to Blender Market and buy it and install, install it. So how do you install a Blender plugin? Basically, you just go Edit, Preferences, Install, and then you want to find the zip file uh, from wherever you downloaded it, and then you'll be able to install it. Okay, so from there, uh, let's see. So just for this tutorial here, you want to search up uh, Smut Base uh, Widowmaker. So Smut Base Widowmaker uh, v7.6. You don't really have to follow along with me, but just uh, 4.6, sorry. 4.6. Uh, you want to click on the first link there. Um, so this is the uh, model that we're going to be using in this video, made by Mavixchus. So this is a lovely, lovely model. So credits to him for the amazing model. So when you click on this link, you want to scroll down to the very bottom and you want to download both of these files. So you want to download this file. You want to click on it. Uh, I'm not going to click on it. I'm not going to do it because I've already downloaded it. And second, it has some NSFW content that I can't really show on YouTube, but also this one here. So you want to download both of them. You want to wait for them and you'll press start download, but I won't do that because I've downloaded it already. And I'll just close that. And yeah, so you want to download both of these. Why? Because this one here is the textures and this one here is the 3D model itself. And if you don't have both of them, you're not going to be able to uh, see the proper model. 
Okay, and the final thing that you'll probably need is you wanna download WinRAR. Download and install WinRAR, why? Because um, as you can see here, we have a RAR file and you can only extract these if you have uh, WinRAR. And this 7z file, you can extract it with 7zip or you can extract it with WinRAR. So WinRAR is actually kind of free for personal use. So it doesn't really matter. So you could just type in WinRAR, go uh, click on the first uh, download link, the download link there. And then you wanna just go to whatever the is for your operating system. So my one's Windows English 64-bit. Uh, so I would just download this one. But um, since I already have that installed to my machine, I'm not gonna do it. But if you need to download that, uh, double click on it and install it to your machine. Okay, so once you've done all that, uh, basically you'll have these two files here. So I'm just going to uh, make a new folder. So I'm just gonna say Widowmaker um, comes in tutorial. And you'll have these two files here. So from here, what you wanna do is you want to right click on this 7-zip file, press extract here, um, because you'll have that option if you install WinRAR. So make sure to install WinRAR first. Then you need to right click on this second one, this extract here as well. So it'll take a bit and you should have everything that you need to start this off. So I'm just gonna close some of these Blender files. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna open up this v4.6.blend file. Okay, so you'll see this message right here. So it's rig spider butt ui.py, press allow ex execution. Um, okay, so we can see, so before we do anything else, I'm just going to put on her lewd, I wanna put on her uh, clothed because otherwise this is not gonna be safe for YouTube. So I'm just gonna hide this one and I'm gonna put this one on. Okay, so I'm just press, basically pressing these eye icons, everything here. So just make sure that they're all enabled uh, just because, um, just to show and hide different things. But obviously you can go with the lewd option. Um, I'm just doing this because YouTube uh, doesn't allow this. So yeah. Okay, so then, then basically let's create, let's press this plus icon general layout to get a new layout kind of thing. Okay, so then we'll just go to the material preview mode. So I, I hid the lewd one and I showed the clothed one. Okay, because this is needs to be SFW because it's YouTube. Okay, then you'll see this file here. You'll be like, why is this so pink? So pink means missing textures. So what you need to do here is if you see these pink textures here, it usually means that their textures are missing. So you wanna go file, external data, and find missing files. So from here, I'm just going to, um, I'm gonna go inside this V3 folder here, and I'm gonna let, I'm gonna press, uh, so the um, Widowmaker Spider V3, that's the unzipped uh, texture folder, then press find missing files, and Blender will do its thing and find all the missing files, hopefully. Okay, so change burn prefix. Yeah, those ones are okay. We don't really need those. Those are all good. Okay, so from the here, so we'll press N and as we can see, everything's found. So we can see all these different things here. So we can actually, instead of hiding them in, uh, in the outliner right here, so by pressing the I icon to hide them, we can also use these ones here. So we can see we have the visor closed. So we can actually animate this value by pressing I and we can actually make a keyframe there and go over here to frame 25. And maybe if you wanted to press I again, then you have an animation. So we can see when we play here, when I press shift spacebar to play, uh, whoops, <laughs> zero and one. Well, it should have, it should have done that. I don't know why it's not doing that, but <laughs> I don't know. Um, we're just gonna ignore that now for now. <laughs> But it should it should make an animation there. But since we're not doing that now, I'm gonna kind of gonna ignore it. Okay, so yeah, but you can control like the lots of different parts of the uh, rig here because um, Mavix just kind of made all these options. So you can press on these to to um, uh, show and hide the different controls and stuff like. So face primary will show the face controls here, and we can turn off the torso controls, the fingers, everything else. So I'm just gonna turn them back on for the meanwhile. 
but um, yeah, so you can have all these different controls and you, it gets a little bit too noisy. So for example, if I only want to see the torso because I only want to adjust the torso, I'm just going to hide everything else by clicking on it and dragging so I can only see the torso here. Before we do anything else, I just want to do a quick review of all the basic Blender uh, things. So how do we navigate in Blender? So first of all, we use the middle mouse button. It always revolves around the middle mouse button. So the middle mouse button, it means rotate. So when you want to rotate around your camera in the viewport, Second is the shift plus middle mouse button. That means to pan. So we're just going to look around. And the third one is control plus middle mouse button, which means to scroll in and out. So zoom in and out. So with these three controls, um, you can easily navigate the Blender viewport. Okay, so from here, what we're going to do is we're gonna start kind of posing our character to match our previous one. So kind of like this. So we're just going to start posing her. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press Rx. So, so first of all, um, what you want to do is if you're in object mode here, you want to select the skeleton. So the skeleton is the thing that moves the mesh. So you can imagine like a puppet, it's kind of the invisible strings that move the puppet, which is the mesh, the 3D shape that you can see. So we're just going to go to pose mode from object mode, go to pose mode. Once you've selected the skeleton, so you might not see, like if you click on a mesh here, you're like, hey, wait a second, I can't find pose mode. That's because you haven't selected the skeleton. So you need to select the skeleton and go to pose mode. From here, we're gonna start going over some of the controls. So how do we move something or transform it in Blender? So we have to use the G, R, and S keys. So the G key means when you move it. So can you see when I move, when I'm pressing, I pressed a G to start this move. So I press G and I can start moving it. Okay, second is R. So R means rotate, right? So it means to rotate it, and you can see how I'm rotating the bone. And finally is S. S means to scale up and down. So we bear, we don't really use that when we're uh, doing skeletons, but it's good to know. So how do we reset all the transformations here? So maybe let's say I've moved it kind of like this, and, I, and I'm like, wait a second, I don't want this. So I could just press Control Z. That's one thing that would undo it, but Another really easy way to reset your skeleton to the default positions is press A to select all the bones, then press Alt-G. So what does Alt-G mean? It means to clear the, bone, the pose location. So it moves it so that um, it resets it to the default locations. Now press Alt-R, which means clear the pose rotation. So we just reset it to the default rotations and press Alt-S to we set it to the default scale there. Okay, so yeah, so we're back to the default scale. So now I'm gonna get started posing my character. So I'm just gonna press um, R, and when we, which means rotate, and when we press X with it, it means to rotate it in the X axis, right? So using these two combinations, I can push her downwards, so I pressed RX there. So I want her to kind of be on her knees a little bit, so maybe just, I'm pressing G here, remember G to move up and down and the sound so around, so just like that. So that looks okay. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to press N again to show my items tab and I'm gonna show some of these rig layers. So maybe I want my, uh, my arms and some of my legs, I think. And maybe even my hair here because I just kind of want some of these controls. So I'm just gonna press R, wait. Just checking. Uh, okay, that doesn't actually have any controls. Okay, so um, that's okay. So I'm just gonna press, click on this root bone right here. Well, not root bone, but it's the parent bone of all these other parents, of these other bones. So I'm just gonna press Rx. So as you can see here, it just brings, because it's the parent of everything, it brings it all down right there. Okay, from here, I'm just going to press G um, just to get her kind of, her hands kind of facing downwards. Okay, so this is an IK rig here, so it's really easy to move. Um, but anyway, um, that's why I do recommend using smut base models from from the uh, for the big uh, for beginners, um, just to introduce you to how we can pose models. Okay, from here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press R X. So what does that mean again? It means rotate in the X axis. And I'm just going to move her legs ever so slightly backwards because we want her to be kind of to be on her knees, right? 
I just do this animation. Okay, so I'm just going to click on the other leg bone, press Rx. You can also do symmetry here. So you can apply changes to both sides so I can move both legs at the same time. I don't 100% like that though. Um, well, I don't know. <laughs> it does help you out, pose it faster, but I don't know. Personally, I don't really like that because it, it just looks too symmetric myself. So I'm just gonna turn that option off. But if you wanna turn it on, there's the X mirror option. So this will move both um, the X, the left and right at the same time. Let me turn that off again. Okay, so I kind of want her legs to be spread just a little bit, maybe like this. And then I just want her other leg to be right here. Okay, from here, so her hand grasps look a little awkward. So I'm just gonna press RZ to rotate it in the Z axis. Yeah, maybe even face them forward a little bit. I don't know where, how I feel about that yet. It doesn't really matter too much because we're gonna be uh, looking from the backwards angle. So it shouldn't matter too much but it's still okay to double check. Let me just double check how it looks. Kind of like that. Okay, yeah. So actually it's it's fairly okay here already, but if I want to move the position of the knees, I need to move these pole targets. So these pole targets are where the knees will point towards, as you can see, when I move it to the left. So I'm just pressing G to move it to the left. It's where the knees will point towards um, for IK rigs. Okay, yeah, so I think that's pretty decent already, actually. Um, let me just see her position of her hands. So yeah, just a little bit forward. I don't like her hands. Whoops, don't select the mesh though. So whenever you select something, you should select the skeleton to move it. So don't move this like this. Can you, can you, can you see what's happening here? Because I'm moving the mesh itself, this is what happens, right? So you need to move the skeleton, the black lines, right? So don't ever, don't try not to move the mesh or, ro or rotate it or do anything to it, okay? So just move the skeleton by itself. I think I'll just go with something really basic like this. Um, just for the sake of this tutorial, but you can kind of pose it however you want. Okay, so from here, what I'm going to do is I think that will be fine for me. Um, I'm just going to move this hair a little bit pose it a little bit, let's see how it looks. In fact, let me just go back to object mode and let me add in a camera first before I just decide to do anything else. So I'm just gonna press numpad zero and numpad zero means that I go to the position of the camera. Now I'm just going to go to the view, the view tab. So if you don't see this tab, you can press N to toggle, hide or show of the properties panel. Then just uh, enable this box, which says camera to view. So from here, you'll notice that you can start moving the camera. Before, um, wait a second, why do I? Okay, that's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, that's okay. Um, but before before I had this, when I move my camera, you can see it doesn't move anything. Um, and let me just show that camera. Actually, let me just delete all this first before I do anything else. Let me just delete the stuff because I already, there's, there was already a camera in here was the problem. And let me just delete this camera as well. And I'll delete these things here. Okay, so from here, I'll just make a new camera again by pressing Shift A. So Shift A makes a cam makes a new mesh or whatever. So we made a camera here, and let me just press numpad zero to go to that camera view. And now when I press, so if I just scroll out normally, you'll see nothing happens. But if, so I'm scrolling out on my mouse wheel, that means to zoom out, or I can use control middle mouse button. They're both the same thing, but control middle mouse button gives you more control um, over your zoom. So I'm just gonna check this box which says camera to view, and you can see I'm gradually zooming out uh, when I check that camera to view box. Okay, so I, the most important thing here is you really wanna focus on the most important subject. So if I want to, I can either get like an overhead view or I think maybe something like this, a view like this would be good. Something like this, okay, but this is where we need to adjust the aspect ratio. So here, um, if we choose to make this square, we can kind of, you can see what we can do. So the numbers here don't really matter so much because why? Because we can up or make this like 200% or something. So the bigger thing is we need to worry about the ratio of these numbers. So can you see how it's one to one? Right now it's 1920 times 1920. That means you'll have a square here. But if you have 1920 times 1080, which is the standard resolution here, you'll see that you see um, 
this standard resolution. Um, so what, what do we need to care about here? We want to care about zooming in. So we want to crop to our subject because that's the most important thing. So in this case, I think the best uh, kind of thing that works out for this is probably the one-to-one -one, uh, ratio because we can see the whole body very easily and we have the back shot. From here, we can kind of adjust the focal length as well. So basically, the, the, if you have a really low focal length, you'll see that um, things start to really distort. So you kind of want something around 50 or more. That means that like your, your features will not distort. Um, if you have a really high focal, if you have a high focal length. Okay, so from here, I think that looks okay. Um, I'm just gonna pre uh, uncheck this camera to view box to lock that camera to make sure it doesn't move. And I'm just going to have a look around here. So I'm just using the rotate middle mouse button, or uh, the middle mouse button to rotate. Okay, that looks good. And I think that pose is already good, <laughs> at least in my opinion. Okay, so from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on the come simulation. Uh, but before I do that, I'm just gonna switch this to cycles. I'm gonna switch this, it's to GPU compute. If it isn't GPU compute already, why is it 2000? I don't know why it's 2000, um, but I'm gonna switch it to 100, um, 100. Usually 80 to 100 samples is already good enough. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna go with uh, 64 samples as a 32 samples as viewport. I think that should be fine. And I'm just going to go to film and I'm going to, yeah, film transparent, make sure film transparent is checked. And yeah, I think that should be the bulk of the settings. I don't know why it's behaving. It feels like it's behaving a little weirdly. But let me just double check. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, film transparent. Okay. Yeah, okay, so from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to start the come simulation part. So I'm just gonna grab the cylinder. Actually, before I do that, I'm just gonna do some lighting, actually. So I'm, I'm gonna to go to cycles here. Okay, so you can see that there's no lights here because I deleted everything. So remember, I deleted that folder with the lights and I deleted all those lights there. So I just selected them and I just deleted them. And okay, so from here, I'm just going to add in my own lights. So I'm just going to show you how to make a, how to use a H, an HDR, HDRI. So basically, I'm going to go to HDRI Haven, but it's now called Polyhaven. Um, so you want to just go to HDRI, why not? Okay, so HDRIs, so just search up Polyhaven HDRI, click on the first link. And basically, you want to select an HDRI that you think looks good for your lighting setup. Um, let me go with, I don't know. I'll go with maybe something colorful looking. Why not? We'll go with this one. So I'll just, so 4K is enough. You do not need to download 8K or 16K or 18K. Um, you really don't. So just download this and just save it wherever. I'm gonna save it to my HDRIs folder. Okay, um, so it's an EXR file. So from here, what you can do is you can switch this to world. So basically, what, how do we get to the shading tab? I just pressed plus general shading to make a shading tab. And then I change this to world. Okay, so I'm just gonna zoom out by using this control middle mouse button to zoom out. And um, so we're just gonna switch this to render preview mode uh, to see that. So basically I clicked in the top right to switch to render preview. And I'm just gonna see what is what does their default one look like. Their default one doesn't look too bad, honestly. So you can use their default one, but basically we had, I clicked on here, the background node, and I adjust it to one. It doesn't look too bad, honestly. Um, actually, it looks quite good, <laughs> this hotel room.jpg. In fact, let me just turn off the film transparent so you can see what it looks like. It looks kind of like that. Okay, that's not too bad, honestly. It looks pretty good. Um, but we're going to use our own though for this case. So I'm just going to delete this. Goodbye. Get out of here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, make an, so I'm just pressed shift A to make a new uh, texture and I pressed environment texture. Okay. So then I just collect this, uh, connect this color node to the color node. And now I just press open and I find um, where I put that HDRI file that I just downloaded from the website. 
I think it was this one here. And as you can see, I have her kind of like this. So, but you'll be like, it's way too, she's way too small. So you can adjust this in camera, but basically most of the time you wanna use the lighting from it. You don't want to use anything else. So, because you know, you wanna use uh, meshes and stuff. Um, you only wanna use HDRIs for backgrounds, like, like um, the horizon line, basically. You don't wanna use it for close up things. And as you can see, when I scroll inwards, like it doesn't affect the size of my HDRI. So if I really wanted to kind of match it almost, I could just scroll up, like um, zoom in with my camera so that Widowmaker is an appropriate size. But I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna use transparent, okay? Um, so then you'll be like, hey, wait a second, this is done, right? So HDRIs offer you realistic lighting. They don't offer you good lighting, okay? So there is a difference. So if you want really realistic lighting and you are okay with this already, yeah, you could kind of call this done. But I don't really like doing that. So what I like to do is to set it to something really low, maybe like 0.2-ish. And then to, so for the, the background node in the shading tab, to set it to 0.2. So I just clicked on it, set it to 0.2. Um, then adding my own lighting uh, to the scene. This is already kind of bright already, but I don't dislike it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adding some area lights. So how did I do that? I press shift A to add a, add a something and add an object. And I went light, area light. I prefer area lights. Um, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna, like you can use uh, other lights, but my preferred type is area lights. Okay, so the trick with lighting is to use low, is to use uh, low power lights and to use a lot of lights all together. So I'm gonna use maybe a five watt kind of thing. I'm gonna go RX or to rotate it, RY, or RZ, wrong rotation. Yeah, so maybe point it towards this way. So actually I'm gonna go to my camera because that's that's the important angle uh, because I'm not, or at least for the sake of this animation, I'm not going to be looking at the other angles. So maybe RX, R, RZ here to rotate it this way. Maybe I'll have some interesting lighting here. Let me try. So the best way to do this really is to split. So to, if you just click in your top left here and then you drag, then you'll get another uh, another uh, window here. So basically adjust lights from this window and use this to preview your light, like the effect of your lights. So this one's okay-ish. Okay, okay um, that's good. But I want a light maybe under. Okay, and just for the sake of animations, make sure you're careful about, um, yeah, that looks good, but make sure you're careful about um, how your lights like aren't too close to your subject. Because otherwise, if you look at, like if you look at what happens if I make it really close to the subject, maybe if I put it like right here, you'll see it looks very weird. It creates this line thing because when the light collides with the object, it creates a weird, line thing which doesn't look right. So just make sure that they don't collide 100%. Okay, so something like this. Maybe I could brighten this up a little bit. Uh, 10 watts, but I'm gonna change the color. Let's see. Blue is very interesting. I like this blue. Yes, I really like this blue. This is a very interesting blue. I'm just thinking maybe a little bit more, more light on the right side of the butt. <laughs> and let me just shift D this to duplicate it. So now let me just, well, this is a very interesting effect, honestly, <laughs> but it kind of clips in, in and when she's gonna start moving, it's going to look very, very weird. So I'm not going to do that. Um, I could do this as an overhead light. Um, I could use like a different color as well. Like it's pink. Mm. Debatable. I'm just thinking of which looks right. Yeah, it kind of matches. It doesn't really matter. I'm just experimenting really. So like lighting wise, it's just a lot of experimentation. Just see what looks right, what, what doesn't look right. Um, so I'm just going to RX this and I just want some light on the... So you want some shadow as well. So you don't want to completely erase all shadow. And I'm just going to turn down this size here. So you want to vary the size, the location, a lot of other things. 
Okay, that actually doesn't look too bad, honestly. Um, it looks okay-ish. Yeah, I'm actually okay with that. Let me. So you can also, when you're making this, you can hide the effect of lights and see how each light individually adds to the render. So let's see. So let me just see if, this one looks okay, but does this light add to it? I think this makes it too bright, honestly. So I'm just going to click on this light right here. So I made it a little bit smaller so it doesn't light as much stuff up. So the light lighting will be more uneven. But if I turn this power down just a touch. Okay, so zero, maybe I could just give it 500 milliwatts. And then maybe a little bit more, 1.5 milliwatts, 1.5 watts. Mm, two watts, three watts. Okay, three watts is decent, I think, just to highlight that. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe four watts. Okay, we'll go with that, I think, just for now, just for this kind of um, tutorial, but you can kind of do your own lighting. Um, wait, can I just see, what does her, what do her solar look like? Yeah, maybe just something like, I don't know, something like this, just because, <laughs> just because I feel like it. Um, but yeah, okay, that should be a really good uh, lighting setup. So once we've done that, I'm just going to make a new layout tab by pressing on the plus icon and pressing general layout. And from here, I'm just going to add the cum simulation, which you've all been waiting for. Sorry about that. I will put a timestamp in the description below. So I made this, okay, so I need to enable screencast keys again. Okay, I don't know why it's not working, but let's go back to this tab here. Uh, what, what is going on? Excuse moi. <laughs> Excuse moi. Oh yes, yes, yes. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so I'm just going to close this tab here <laughs> by clicking on the top left and dragging to the left. And let me just. So pretty much, I just pressed S to scale it down. So I just want to scale it down to here and I want to press SZ. So this will scale it upwards in the Z axis. So I'm just going to scale it down even more. So we're just going to make a D, <laughs> um, a pretend D because I can't actually show a D on YouTube. And I'm just going to right click on this and shade smooth. I'm going to press RX to rotate it in the X axis. And this looks fi fine, I think. I don't know. Okay, this is way too big. Let me just scale it down a little bit. Scale it down like this much maybe. Yeah, that looks around the size, but obviously you can use dildos or whatever these uh, from the from Smart Base. Okay, so obviously, but uh, for this case, I won't. Okay, so I'll just use it like maybe like this. I think I just may, maybe want to put it a little bit above. Let me check how this looks in camera. Yeah, that looks decent. Okay, maybe somewhere here-ish. I'll go with somewhere there. Okay, and. Just a reminder, the render preview mode is top right, and we can just cycle between these to see um, different preview modes. So this one will take longer. Render, render preview will take a lot longer than material preview. Um, so that's why I switched to material preview. So it's real time. Okay, so from here, I'm just going to, okay, so let me just shift D this now and press S. Okay, yeah, so don't apply transforms just yet. I'm just gonna make it much smaller maybe a little bit thinner by pressing S Y to scale it in the Y axis. Okay, but not that much. So S Y to scroll it inwards a little bit. Okay, I think, I think that'll be okay just for the sakes of this animation. You can make it thinner or more realistic or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, okay, I'm just gonna scale it down a little bit more scale this down a little bit more. So remember, like, so this is gonna be the fluid, so I'm just gonna, if it's smaller, it's gonna have less fluid. So I'm just gonna add, I'm gonna to go to the physics tab here, uh, right here, and just click on flip fluid. Then I'm going to go to domain, oh, sorry, inflow object. So really quick review. So the uh, simulation settings are right here uh, by Keba. So if you wanna use these settings here, you can, and they're fantastic. So I'm just gonna use these settings, but before I do that, I have to make the, I have to make the 
a domain. So a, a fluid simulation is made out of a couple of things. It's made out of a domain and a fluid object. So a domain is what areas of the, can how far can the fluid move, I guess. So I'm just gonna use this here. This is okay, I think. I'm just gonna call it, call that okay. And I'm gonna add a, so I click on the mesh itself, the cube, and I go flip fluid domain, okay? And before you do anything else, remember, click on your domain, press control A, all transforms, to apply all transforms. Otherwise, this will not work. Same thing with your cylinder, control A, to apply all transforms, and press all transforms. Otherwise, your cum simulation won't appear and you'll be sad. Okay, so from here, we wanna give it a negative x velocity. So we want it to go forward, I think. Wait, no, negative y velocity, sorry. Negative y velocity. Though it kind of depends upon like which direction your character is facing. This is the actual, this is the y axis, right? So this is the negative part and that's the positive part in that other direction. Okay, but let's continue on. From here, I'm just gonna make this right here. I'm gonna make this a collision object. And, oh, whoops, not a collision object, a flip fluid, and I'm gonna make it an obstacle. So it gets in the way of the cum. And I'm just gonna also make her body right here, her skin, a, a collision object as well, because it's gonna collide with the fluid. Okay, from here, I just want to click on the domain, which is this uh, wireframe box here and I just want to adjust a couple of settings. So under Flip Fluid World, so if you just want to look at these settings again, we just need to enable viscosity, surface tension, sheeting effects. So um, it's Flip Fluid World, viscosity, a surface tension, and sheeting effects, right? But we want to also adjust the settings here. So if I just go back here and I put that up, it's just uh, right here, it's, surface ten, uh, viscosity is 0 0.2. So this, these were the settings that Keba found. So full credits to him. Um, but really just play around with your settings. You don't have to use these settings. Um, but uh, we found out that these kind of worked well. So just 0 0.01 for sheeting strength and sheeting thick is 0 0.05. And yeah, so it's, the strength uh, scale, just leave it as one for the collision objects. That should be fine. So what is the sheeting? The sheeting is basically how much does the liquid stick to each other, like the liquid particles stick to each other, and how much do they stick to the clothing. Um, surface tension is how much it sticks to clothing as well. I think it's kind of, I don't know, <laughs> I'm not a scientist. Um, but And viscosity is how thick it is. So yeah, so I think that should be fine. We're just going to do a quick bake. So make sure that you've pressed Control A, all transforms, and make sure that you've clicked on the inflow object and you've pressed Control A, all transforms, or this will not work, okay? I've done this several times and I always forget. But anyway, click on the domain here and just click on under the physics tab, go to the physics tab, press bake. Oh wait, before we do that, more bake settings, change the end frame to something easy, so around 50 frames. So we're just gonna bake 50 frames and see how that works first. Okay, yep, yeah, so that's fine, that looks good. So let me just play, play it through. So as we can see, we have this liquid here already, which is fantastic. If I just press shift spacebar to play it, we can see, we or spacebar for some people, we have this fantastic liquid simulation. So you can see, um, just a note about that, you can see that it's kind of low quality, right? It's a little bit low quality, so it's kind of, because the, the particles themselves are really large. So that's why it causes this bumpy effect, which doesn't look so good. Um, but you can solve that by increasing the resolution. But the, if you increase the resolution too much, it will increase the render times uh, or the bake times. So, but it will also add more fluid. So if you wanted, let's say more liquid to this, you can add more fluid to this. That's oh, right. If you wanted more liquid, increase this resolution to maybe 100 or something. Um, but for now, I think that's looking good, but we want to do a couple of things. So I want to just go to the shading tab again, and I want to go back to material preview, and I want to click on this uh, cone right here. Make sure right-click shade smooth. I think it is shade smooth already, but whatever, that's fine. And now we want to switch this from world to object, and I want to just 
give this a basic material. So I just want to give it a base color. Let's give it um, something skin colored ish. Yeah, this is skin colored ish. That's good enough. And we can give it a subsurface, which is just like a red glow coming from the inside. But <laughs> it doesn't really matter for this case. Um, but whatever, why not? We'll, add it. we'll give it a red glow. Usually 0 0.01 or less is a realistic value. But yeah, that's good enough. And now this for the come material. So how do we add the come material? We pretty much just go file append and remember where you downloaded that um, that come bucket uh, blend file. So just double click on it now. So where so find it and just double click on it. Remember how do we get here again? We just went file append and then we just uh, went to wherever you downloaded that come bucket uh, blend file. And now you go to material and mat come. Okay, so from here, you just wanna click on this uh, this fluid surface and just go to material and just click on this uh, um, material ball right here, change it to mat come. Okay, that's fantastic. And we already have this semen material, but this is just for Eevee and we want to use it for cycles. So how do we switch? So we have all these different uh, presets come presets, as we should say, uh, but how do we switch between them? For example, how would I use Crute's preset if I wanted to do that? So basically, I just disconnect everything here. So I'll just disconnect everything here. And then from here, what I can do is I can just connect base color to base color here for the principled BSDF and the transmission to transmission. Uh, wait, where is transmission? Transmission is the bottom one there. So let, let me just move it downwards. So I can actually just press G to select to move the selected node and move the transmission right here. Okay. So this is if I want to use it for EV, but I don't want to do it for EV. I want to use the cycles presets. So I'm just going to disconnect this altogether because I do not want to use that. So whatever connects to the material output node um, is what shows in the viewport. So I want to use rigid 3D's preset. So I'm just going to connect his preset surface to surface and volume to volume. Okay, so this only works for cycles. Um, you'll notice there's this weird cloud on it. That's because we are not seeing it in, uh, in the render pre preview mode, right? So it looks really bad here, but when we go to render preview, it looks a lot better. Okay, so I'm just gonna go to the press numpad zero to see it in the camera view. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. And wow, that actually looks pretty decent. <laughs> and yeah, so so from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna probably increase the resolution a little bit. Maybe, actually before I increase the resolution, I'm probably just gonna click on this cylinder here and I'm just going to increase that initial inflow velocity to maybe, I'm thinking negative two. And I'm gonna rebake this uh, foot fluids thing. So I'm gonna click on the domain and I'm just going to uh, reset it and I'm just going to bake again. I'm going to see how that looks. So we're baking it at low resolution first before the final uh, bake. So yeah, this is kind of how to create cum simulations. <laughs> um, actually, we do need to do one more thing before I forgot, um, before we do the final bake. Okay, so I'm just going to go to material preview mode so I can actually see a live preview of what's going on. Um, why is this? Oh yeah, so that smoke there, just don't worry about it. That's because of the come material that we have. So I'm just gonna play it with shift space bar. And yeah, that looks pretty decent. So just one thing to be aware of is when you increase the resolution, the liquid will behave completely differently. In fact, um, it will get less viscous in my experience when you increase it. So I might increase this viscosity just a bit maybe to, I don't know, one or something, and just bake it. But before I do that, I just wanna do one thing. I just wanna add some procedural breathing uh, animation. So I'm just going to click on the skeleton, go to pose mode. And basically, I'm just gonna click on the hip bone here. I'm gonna try a few bones here. So if I just go RX, so, whoops, <laughs> not that much. But if I go RX, does this look like breathing? Not really. So if I just go Rx here, does this look like breathing? So Rx, no, not really either. It's still a little weird, still a little jank. 
So actually I already know it so because I've already done this once already, but this one right here is probably the best one for just some breathing. So if I just do it slightly, if I just, if I just um, do it slightly, ever so slightly, it looks kind of like breathing. But basically, and it also makes her ass move as well. <laughs> um, yeah, eloquent. Um, okay, let's see, let's see. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the action editor here, uh, to the graph editor. So I just change this one to the graph editor and I just uh, press I to make a keyframe, right? So so if you don't make a keyframe, I'll press Control Z and I press, so I'm just going to move my mouse into the graph editor and press N. So you'll see there's nothing here, right? But when I press, when I move my mouse to the 3D view and I press I, you'll start to see there's a new thing that appears, which is the modifiers tab, which is what we want. Okay, so what we want to do is I just want to click on the pelvis here to uh, to see the different options and I want to go down to uh, X rotation because that's what I want to change and procedurally animate. So I'm just going to add a modifier. I'm going to add a no noise modifier. Okay, so from here, what I can do is I can just select the X Euler uh, rotation and I can click on view and I can click on uh, frame selected. So this will frame the selected thing. So now I can zoom outwards with the uh, control middle mouse button. And you can see that I'm actually just, um, I'm just seeing what this is right here. So when I just press play, I'll just show you what happened. Let me just zoom out, zoom out a little bit. When I just press play from frame zero, uh, control, shift, you can see that she's moving like really, really rapidly. That, that's completely wrong, right? So what I want to do is I just want to turn up the scale. So this scale here controls how often the things are, but I want it to be less often. So I'm just going to turn up the scale quite a bit because I want her breathing to be very, very slow. Second is the strength here. So the strength is how far she moves up and down, right? So I want it to be very, very, very little. So maybe even 0 0.1. Let me just double check that. Let me just shift space bar. So she's still moving too fast actually there and moving too much. So I'm going to turn up that scale even more perhaps. And I'm going to turn down this to 0 0.05 because, and let me turn on, uh, let me get a random offset value um, just for the randomness. And then I'm just going to press shift space bar. And yeah, that's pretty decent. Yeah. So let me just, um, yeah, that's actually all, all good. Okay, so you want to do this before you bake because otherwise the cum will actually go through the body. So let me just change this back to a timeline and I have her kind of moving naturally-ish. I like that. Yeah, okay, let me just go numpad zero just to double check. So her ass is moving. Let me just um, hide the skeleton for one second because I just want to see, so I just, if I just hide this, Or maybe a little bit more, maybe. So if I just go back to <laughs> the craft editor and I just turn up that strength just a tiny bit because 0 0.05 is just not noticeable enough. So let me just go to the graph editor, select um, the skeleton again. So unhide the skeleton, click it. Uh, and then let me just turn up the strength just a touch, maybe 0 0.08. And let me just hide it again and press numpad zero, because I just want to see her ass move a tiny bit. Okay, yeah, that's decent. That's good enough. Okay, <laughs> and now basically, I just want to change this back to a timeline, and I'm just going to, um, I'm going to now I'm going to do the final bakes, and I think this will pretty much be done. So let me just reset this, and I'm going to change this to 100-ish. So actually, uh, Keva was using 128, resolution but I think 100 is probably enough um, it just depends like it, the, the animation will look slightly more high quality as you go higher um, but like honestly I don't think it, it matters that much um, like the difference becomes less consequential as you go up to a higher resolution so 100 is probably decent enough and it's going to take its sweet time already Okay, yeah, so that should be done. Let me just check how it looks before I bake everything else. So I can just press shift spacebar. And wow, that is actually looking very decent. Let me look how it looks in render preview mode though. Wow, that looks quite incredible. Now let me just
get a little bit close up. And let me just go to material preview mode so I can get a real time preview of that. Wow, that looks incredible. Okay, I'm gonna bake the rest. So I'm gonna bake it to maybe frame 250, uh, not that long, uh, maybe 150, because I don't think I'll have any more patience. Basically, you can press resume baking and it will continue baking and we'll just let it run through. At any time that you want, you can press stop, pause. So you can just say, uh, like if you just want to pause the animation so you can just see how much you've baked um, and how it looks. Yeah, that's looking really good. Wow. So foot fluids, it just, that those sheeting effects just look so much more amazing, uh, in my opinion. Um, you can obviously use Mandaflow and they do have some similar kind of things, but I don't know, it just depends. I think I like it better for, for Come Simulation. You can also pause um, the, you can pause the inflow at any time. For example, if you wanted hit just to, to um, come like a little bit, you can, you can animate this, this thing. So you can, for frame zero, you can turn it on and then by pressing I to make a keyframe and then you move to frame, I don't know, frame five. And then you just turn it off immediately. So you turn it off and you press I to make another keyframe. Yeah, I think that's done. Yeah, that's done. So let me just play through it just to see it in real time. Wow, fantastic. That looks beautiful. Yeah, I'll probably just bake it to 150. Um, okay, so now I'll just sh show, show you the render settings. So you can also use a different camera angle. So if you wanted, you could use this camera angle here. So you can move your camera over here and that would be really fantastic as well. Um, you can also use a different cum material. There's a lot of different methods to create cum, um, but this is just one of them, which is nice for animations. Obviously you would use metaballs uh, for static images, but yeah, this is just nice for otherwise. Okay, so let's see what I just adjust. I think I'm just gonna adjust the position of the camera just a tad. So maybe just zoom it in a little bit just to get a better view because we wanna make up the most. Okay, that looks good. Okay, okay. so the final settings that I'm just gonna do, I'm just going to um, post-processing. Why is there no post process? Okay, all right, no, it's here. Color management. And I'm just gonna turn this from medium high contrast to, oh wait, it's already medium high contrast. That's good enough. So normally it'll be like um, none or, or, so then I would advise you go to medium high contrast or even high contrast. Just depends upon you. Um, you can also change it to very low contrast if you want to do some color grading. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna go with medium high contrast for the sake of this image. Okay, that's fine. You can use the curves to adjust the color as well. So if you want to get some more contrast in certain areas in the red channel, you could make a small S curve to get a little more contrast. But honestly, I'm not gonna do that for this image. Um, but one thing that you should do, make sure that film transparency is on. And okay, so just make sure you render in PNG. So um, even though you're rendering an animation, please render in PNG, look up how to like if, if you just if you if you just look up here, if you look up uh, Blender image sequence to a video, you can convert an image sequence into video like this. But even if you're making a video, please render an image in P PNGs. Why? Because PNGs, if you crash, all your progress will be saved. If you did it as an MP4, if you did it as an FFmpeg video, your progress would not be saved at, at all. So please render in PNGs, even, even if you're doing video, it's also completely lossless and it has true transparency, unlike pretty much every video format with the exception of a very few. So PNGs are the very best. Okay, so apart from that, just choose where you want to output. So I will just choose Blender renders and I'll choose, I'll make a new folder. I'll call this, um, I'll call this uh, Widowmaker comes in, I'll press accept. Okay, then I'll do one thing first. So I'll just turn, in, turn on this denoising data pass and then I'll make a new general compositing. Uh, where's compositing, what? What, okay, VFX compositing. 
Okay, so from here, so you can use this node setup, but I obviously I don't really like it that much. You don't really need it. Like so when like when you do this initially, you'll have nothing in well, okay, you'll have you'll have this and you'll have this. Okay, so because you enabled the denoising data pass in the passes here, so if you en enable it here, you'll see that those denoising options come in. So from here, just make sure use nodes is enabled. Press Shift A, search for the denoise node, the Intel denoise node. Connect noisy image to image. Connect noisy uh, denoising normal to normal, and connect denoising albedo to albedo, and connect image to image. And that's basically it. So from here, we're just going to do a test render before we render our animation. Um, I'm probably not going to render the animation uh, here because it's going to take a ton of time. But I will just see what it should look like. So as you can see, we have this beautiful, beautiful image. You can make it more lewd by removing the clothing. Um, but um, yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> you can use less samples as well. If it takes too long, uh, you can use less samples. Um, oh yeah, just one thing I did forget, but I will just go over it real quick after this is done. Yeah, okay, so we can see there's still a little bit of noise in some of the areas. Can you see it's still, how it's still a little bit grainy? Like if you look close, it's still a little bit grainy. So the denoise the de -noise node will make sure it's not grainy anymore. So you'll see that it looks grainy here, right? It looks grainy here, some, some of those parts. But once the denoise node, like once we go through the compositing, so it's compositing right now, can you see how it's no longer noisy at all? Like it's a lot less noisy. So this is a beautiful, beautiful image that we can post on Twitter or whatever. Um, we can also post it on, uh, <laughs> you can make an animation out of it. But before we make an animation out of it, one thing to do to increase your render, like decrease your render times, you can, first of all, decrease your samples. So you can decrease this to like 50 or something. Uh, 60, like 60 to 80 is generally where I'd go. You don't really need to go to 100 or 120. That's just losing time. Second thing, make sure your tiles are 256 by 256 if you're using GPU compute. Uh, also, one more thing to check, edit preferences, uh, system. Just make sure you're using CUDA. <laughs> I wasn't using CUDA. But anyway, use CUDA um, and check both your graphics card and your CPU is enabled. If you use like uh, RTX, I think optics is a tiny bit faster. But yeah, uh, from there, yeah, so that's the optimal performance settings. So you can just go render, render animation, and you can let it run. So this will just render the animation as a lot of different images uh, from, oh yeah, so you should also, <laughs> you should also, um, I can just hide this for a second. <laughs> oh, you, sh you should, you should also click on here the render passes and make sure that's uh, like make sure your your render sequences okay i will just pause this after it's done with this image okay i'll just pause it right here okay so i'll just close it so you can close it at any time it doesn't matter but the thing is make sure that your frame start and frame end is correct and yeah that should be it so basically you can start to see the animation that was starting to appear uh, in this render in CBook, uh, Blender render. Okay. Yep, so you can see that these two, these two images were starting to appear already of the animation. So when you import as an image sequence into your video ed editor of choice, you'll be able to get a, a full MP4 play, uh, movie from there. Okay, um, also, um, if you render as render image, I forgot one thing, it doesn't actually save the image until you until you actually save the image because it thinks you're doing test renders, right? But if we want to save this image right here, so I'm just going to let it finish, we need to go image save as, like when it's done rendering. Yep, so it's done rendering. rendering. If it doesn't save the image, right? We have to go image save as. And then let me just save it wherever I want it. Blender renders, and I will just save it 
right here. So I'll just say like comes in middle <laughs> uh, Widowmaker. And there, yeah, that's basically the basics of how to create a come animation in Blender. And I hope you enjoyed. Um, you are my lifeblood. Thank you so much for being here. Anime Nyan out.